Okay, so welcome to my talk about how to become a narrative designer. As mentioned, my name is Eve Gorhonen. I'm the senior narrative designer at Housemark. And that's all the introductions I'm going to do because there's a lot to go through and I only have 20 minutes to uh, use here. And first of all, I want to address what is narrative because I see a lot of people actually, you know, mixing this up with story and or plot. And what plot is, is usually kind of like a smaller set of events in the larger story, which is then a kind of objective set of events that take place. But what narrative actually is, is the viewpoint and or the order into that story. So I'll use the example of Final Fantasy VII, which is told from the viewpoint of Cloud. But we could also tell it from the viewpoint of Sephiroth, or we could tell it in a different order. So for example, flashbacks are a type of kind of like taking a piece of story and putting it in the middle out of the chronological order of it. So that is what narrative is about. It's how do we tell that particular story? And then what is narrative design? And again, I want to go over what it isn't, and it isn't the same thing as game writing. What writers often do is that they write the actual words that the player sees or hears in the game. And they're mostly concerned with the characters and the plot. So what we just talked about. But what narrative designers do is that they often write stuff that doesn't get seen by the player. They provide background information for the writers and artists and designers to be able to do their job. But that doesn't mean that any of their writing actually makes it into the game for the player to see. And they're often concerned with the design and story interactions, where those two, two things meet. And you could basically condense it down to writer being concerned, what is our story? and the narrative designer being concerned with how do we tell our story. So the how of the storytelling. And I also wanted to take a moment to quote a friend of mine, Inari Borgoniel, who's Inari Flexion over on Twitter, follow her. And she says that narrative design is part of the game development that focuses on the player's emotional experience. And I think that's, that's a really key part in all of the games. All game developers should be focusing on creating the same emotional experience for the player. But I think narrative design is the, the job where kind of like your sole focus is on how to create that particular emotional experience. But what do we actually do as narrative designers? Well, duh, we design narrative features. But again, well, let's drill down a little bit deeper. So we de define the narrative techniques. Uh, what does that actually mean? So do we tell the story through voiceover, cinematics, audio logs? Can we somehow tell it through the art and the sound and the actual game mechanics themselves? So at the beginning of a project, usually a narrative team and the narrative designers sit together and kind of figure out like how we can actually tell our story. And then we often create and maintain documentation pertaining to those features. Sometimes we do quest design if, if the game has quest design. Or we might outline the scene. So uh, for example, uh, I, as a narrative designer, may need to set some limitations uh, for the writer. Like in this scene, we have to be indoors because we need to be doing some loading. Or, you know, we need to kill this NPC halfway through the story because we just don't have the budget to maintain this, you know, big NPC cast. So kind of like outlining the scenes, not writing the content themselves, but setting uh, the boundaries within the writer does their work. And there might be scripting. Uh, there might be writing, uh, stuff like world Bible names, item descriptions, and then also setting the tone. Uh, again, working on that emotional experience and making sure that everyone's working towards that same tone, that we don't have like weird humorous bits or too gloomy bits if that doesn't fit the tone we're going for. And I want to take a moment to talk about scripting and writing, uh, just in case there are people who aren't aware of the difference between the two. So writing... Even in games, often follows this kind of screenplay format uh, that is familiar to a lot of writers from TV and film. But uh, so these are called scripts, but scripting in game development is actually a completely different thing. It is more akin to coding, it is triggering events, spawning enemies, uh, VO, items, stuff like that. And, you know, if a game uh, job description says we're looking for scripting experience, we don't mean writing, we mean scripting. And often writing uh, in games looks much more like this. It is writing variations on the same thing over and over because we need variation as the player just stumbles on the same interaction over and over again. And scripting can also look much more like this, kind of like coding light if we don't have visual scripting tools. So again, very important that you understand the difference between these two if you're looking for narrative design jobs. 
And getting back to what narrative designers do, a second big part of it is communicating the narrative. And this is the probably the biggest and hardest part of any job. Communication fails except by accident. And you need to be communicating the narrative to the team. You need to be selling those narrative features to the team because you can't make those features happen by yourself. You need the help from coders, artists, other designers, UI, audio, QA. All those people need to be kind of like behind your feature and making sure that it shines to its best capability. You're also providing feedback for writers, artists, designers, again, making sure that they're working towards that same emotional experience. You may need to provide mood boards and reference images to get that kind of like mood across. You are often working as a link between gameplay and story because you as a designer get put together with other designers, but you also have a strong link to narrative. So you're often working as this interpreter between the two worlds. And you're often fighting for the narrative. There's always a point in games when features get cut, content gets cut, and you need to be there fighting for your uh, section, section of the game, like all the other teams are doing. But then, uh, what, what kind of backgrounds do narrative designers have? And this is as varied as you know narrative designers are, but these are the kind of three uh, key ones that I want to highlight to you uh, to kind of get you to understand that narrative design isn't just kind of like one thing. And one background that narrative designers come from is game design. I myself used to be a game designer before I became a narrative designer. And I'm often very much focused on kind of like, how can we tell the story through the gameplay mechanics? So can we let the player gain a particular resource from killing enemies? Does it make sense that these robots drop organic material? Maybe not. Or maybe because scarcity is a defining theme, maybe we'll limit a particular resource to get that across to the player as an emotional experience. I also have colleagues who come from literature background and they're often thinking about kind of themes and character arcs. So could this NPC be a dark mirror to the hero? Or can we have a scene where we show the negative sides of something? Again, Final Fantasy VII, they have scenes that show the kind of like negative sides of Mako extraction. I'm for some reason today very much about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> and then my boss, uh, he comes from background uh, in VFX in movies and he has this very audiovisual focus so how do we showcase what the character has been through if they jump through a window the character model should have cuts on their faces for the rest of the game or music music is a huge part in creating an emotional experience and we can use it to foreshadow and emphasize uh, kind of like emotional experiences in the game and you could again uh condense these down to what is so what is this resource in the game world? Or what does the resource or item person represent story and theme wise? And how do we show something in the game if it's more abstract? And these days there's also different subtypes of narrative designers. This is not a complete list. These are just kind of like three common ones that I've been seeing a lot. But again, there are so many different narrative designers kind of like it depends on the project and the company. But three, these three are quite common. So first of all, is a narrative systems designer. So a little bit to the kind of like coming from game design background, narrative systems designers are usually focused on designing mechanics that express the narrative. Often very systems heavy things. So there's a lot of focus on logic and maths. And usually prototyping and scripting experience is expected from uh, these uh, people. So they might design something like bark systems, what the NPCs and the characters might be saying when particular events happen and how do we weigh particular responses uh, compared to kind of like if there's two conflicting barks that try to play out at the same time, or if they've already played a particular bark that needs to be taken out of the pool, stuff like that. Then there's narrative content designers. They're usually the kind of like classic uh, narrative uh, designers. So they design the content before it is actually given to the writers. And again, there's focus on writing, but not the kind of like writing that is done by the writer, the kind of like background writing to enable the writer's work. Uh, they might not necessarily implement the same content, but in some cases, narrative content designers are much more uh, script, scripting heavy. So they might need to implement the dialogue trees, connect the logic nodes together. And they might do quest design. And again, more like in WoW, okay, we have a quest where a player needs to kill 10 rats. Who is the NPC who gives them that quest? Where are the rats found? Uh, what is the reward? The kind of like high level quest design. 
And then uh, quite common these days, people are looking for narrative, uh, technical, technical narrative designers. And these are the people who usually design the tools to create the narrative. And a lot of focus on coding and script on these ones and scripting and program experience is most likely like a must for these roles. They might do stuff like narrative AI or pipelines, the actual tools required to make the narrative happen. And as mentioned, this is not the full list. Uh, there are way more out there that are related to narrative design, but if I just went through all of them, uh, we'd be here until the evening. So let's get to the juicy part, how to actually become a narrative designer. And I'm going to be talking about the skill set and the portfolio mostly, because there are many ways to narrative design. Uh, but these are the kind of core things that I'm looking for in a narrative designer, uh, regardless of the subtype. And the hard skills uh, I'm looking for is understanding narrative structures and how to craft that emotional experience. This is kind of like hard to quantify, but you need to be able to understand when we talk about story beats and arcs, uh, that kind of the kind of like lingo of storytelling. And then you need to be able to create documentation uh, for these kind of like things like feature specs. Uh, what does the dialogue system look like? How does it function? What is required for it? You may need to put together mood boards or story Bibles, which are kind of like, you know, often tens, hundreds of pages of documentation containing all the narrative content in the game, characters, locations, plots, all the, all the kind of things. And you need to be able to be clear and concise in that documentation because much like players, developers too hate reading. So you need to be able to somehow trick them into kind of consuming this content for you. And then the soft skills, which might be even more important than hard skills. Hard skills can be learned, but learning soft skills, there's there's no really school for that. So this is just something you're going to have to uh, practice uh, by yourself often. And communication, as said, like big part of this role is communicating the narrative to the team. So you need to be able to get your idea across. You need to be able to pitch your ideas and you need to be able to listen because sometimes the best ideas aren't even coming from you. And you need to be able to evaluate ideas that are coming from other team members and seeing if they're even better than yours. And giving and receiving feedback. You could say that this is part of the communication, but I think it's so important that I just set it apart as its own bullet point. You need to be able to get feedback on your idea and take it in. And if you're precious about your ideas and you have a hard time receiving feedback, then you're not going to be able to last in this industry for very long. And you need to be able to give feedback. As I said, like big part is providing feedback for other team members. So you need to be able to do that in a respectful and kind manner so that they're more likely to actually take your feedback in instead of rejecting it. Uh, there's problem solving skills and empathy. Again, like a lot of the time, like even if you're working on the same project, different teams have different focuses and you need to be able to come together and find common ground. And that's why you need to have empathy for your colleagues and also for your players, because sometimes you're working on games that aren't for you and you need to be able to kind of like understand and put yourself in the shoes of the player. What do they want? What are they looking for? And then bonus, these are not like requirements, but can often help any non-game interest. So if you just come through kind of like a game development degree, uh, I do recommend that you get some kind of like minor subject that interests you. It could be anything like I've just listed some, but like, it's just having a wealth of knowledge outside of games about something can always inform your work and provide inspiration. Again, uh, game level design can be very helpful. These are usually the uh, areas that we often work together with most. And again, scripting and modding. As mentioned, in a lot of uh, different subtype roles, uh, scripting experience is very handy and can give you that leg up uh, when it comes to being hired. And then a portfolio. These are the things I'm looking for in uh, a narrative designer's portfolio. First and foremost, proof of having worked with interactive narrative. Again, it doesn't need to be a published game. It could be something you made by yourself, Entwine, Game Maker, RPG Maker. There's lots of free tools out there. I just need to know that you understand the difference between interactive and kind of like traditional narrative, how they differ and what you can do with this medium compared to those others. Proof of having published a game. It doesn't have to be through a, like official publisher. It could be just something you even host on your own website. I'm looking for proof that you were able to like go and finish a project. It's harder than it looks if you haven't done it before. And just 
having that confidence and kind of like knowledge of like it's good enough is very important in a game developer. Proof of having worked with a team. This might be harder if you're kind of like doing this on your own, but you can use a game jam to work with team. And again, in game development, we'll work with teams and being able to be a team player is super crucial. Uh, this is not so necessary, but it again is a bonus proof of being able to work on someone else's idea. Again, don't be precious. You know, most of the times in games, you're not working on your own idea. You're working on someone else's idea and you need to be able to take it, run with it and make it the best you can. And then having a point of view. Uh, what I'm here meaning, I'm looking for something that makes you you, that you have something that, you know, makes you stand out. Like, is it your encyclopedic knowledge about football? Is it your passion for, you know, horses? Is it, you know, anything else that makes your work unique? What do you bring to the table that, you know, sets you apart from all the others? And I'd like to note that anything that I set here, the portfolio section, none of these require you to have a degree in game development, but a good school can help you with the first three to four points. You like, you get to work with narratives, you know, you get to publish something, you get to work with a team and potentially on someone else's idea. But again, it's not required. But if you do decide to get a degree in games, make sure it's one where the curriculum has you actually make games, as many as possible, not just write essays about them, because the hands-on experience is so very different than just analyzing and imagining what it would be to make games. And then on top of that, networking. Like it's it's a terrible, dirty secret that, you know, people like people they know. If I have two equal candidates, you know, in front of me and I know one of them and I don't know the other one, you know, I'm much more likely to go with the person I know over the stranger. So it's just very important on top of having a good portfolio and skills to just get to know people uh, however you can. So attend your local IGDA meetings, attend your any kind of like local game developer events, uh, attend conferences if you can, or if you can't, uh, use social media. Just get to know other developers and don't just kind of like network upwards and network sideways because you are in the same kind of like situation with your you know peers. And if you kind of like create good uh, connections with them, once one of them gets a job, you will have that inside person and they can then recommend you because that is super important that you have someone on the inside who can vouch for you. And when you're getting to know people, uh, please be respectful, be someone people like interacting with, with you. Because if you're just pestering people like, hey, notice me, you know, you're not gonna come across well and it's, I can actually, you know, hinder your chances of getting hired. But just kind of like, it's, it's a long game. So kind of like, you know, take your time, you know, build up that network gradually. Uh, it's not something you can accomplish in a week or even a month. It's, it's one of those things where you just have to make your presence known over time. And that's it. So good luck in your job hunt. Uh, we are hiring, unfortunately not for narrative positions at the moment, but if you do know someone who's uh, kind of like in one of these positions, we are very interested. And if you liked Returnal or if they, this person liked Returnal, they're probably gonna like this project too. And you can connect with us on Twitter. Uh, that's Housemark and then the one below is my personal Twitter account. But I think we have time for some questions now, if you have any. There are quite many, heavy, and I hope uh, that you are going to stay and answer some of those. Um, this is the question that got the most the votes. So we have one. What should the narrative designer portfolio contain? You already answered it, but maybe you want to elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, any kind of like published game. That's, that's the one thing. Uh, kind of like outlining what you did for it. So uh, I'd be looking for kind of like some kind of game that has a narrative components to it. If it's just a 2D shoot 'em up, uh, kind of like, you know, that doesn't have any narrative components, you're kind of like a missing, missing a chance there. And then kind of like, I would like to have maybe a little bit of window insight into how you went about it. Maybe a kind of like spec documentation for a particular feature that you made for it, or kind of some, something to kind of like showcase that background work uh, that went into making the narrative of that game. Thank you very much, Evie. Yay. Do we have more questions or oh, we're running out of time? So yes, I'll we're stay behind. Out of time, but if you can stay in the backstage to answer. I will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you everyone.